ON13 P41 question 8. State what is meant by nuclear binding energy. So binding energy, you got to think of a nucleus full of nucleons. And if you want to separate them all to infinity, very, very far away, how much energy would that take? That's nuclear binding energy. So we can say that this is the total energy required to do what? To separate all nucleons. Nucleons includes protons and neutrons. So all nucleons in a nucleus to infinity. Separate to infinity means completely take them apart and put all the neutrons sep separately very far away. To infinity. So this one is a two mark question. One is the M1 and the other one is you talk about separate to infinity. Okay. Very, the variation of nucleon number, which is down here, of the binding energy per nucleon. Vertical. Ooh, this is a binding energy graph. Uh... Is shown here. Okay, I guess we have to do something on this graph later. When uranium absorbs a slow-moving neutron, one possible reaction is this. Oh, wow. Look at this long equation. It shows the full release of energy. State the name of this type of nuclear reaction. There's only two choices. It's either fusion or fission. So this is uranium-235, very big, split into smaller ones. Uh, so this is going to be fusion. No? So you can say this is a fusion. Fusion is to separate a large nucleus, which is in this case a heavy or large nucleus uranium. So one one become two smaller things. This is fission. One mark, just to know that it's fission. That's B1. Okay. On the figure, mark the position of uranium-235. Okay, let's do that first. Where is uranium-235? You can't remember or you just need to know that it's somewhere near the end of the line on the right side. So maybe I'm going to say here. Call this U. You can go and look at the notes earlier for the thing and see where the positions are. If you can memorize the positions, even great. So this is uranium-235. This will be 235. Okay, what else do we need to mark? Molybdenum-95. Where is molybdenum-95 ah? And lanthanum 139. So this is at 95 and this is 139. Where would I put them? Let's see. Uh, if this is 200, uh, 100 should be about a little bit less. So maybe here. This is 100. It's good to have a scale. So one of it is 95. So maybe I'll put that right here. This is going to be molybdenum. M-O. At, uh, what is this number? 95. This is at 235. There's also lanthanum at 139, so probably a little bit more. If this is 200, just got to do some scales, man. This is 150, 110, 120, 130, 140. Okay, 139 will be somewhere here. Lah. Ah, yeah, here, lah, here. Lah. Let's see whether can or not. This mask schema is quite strict one. You will see later. So this is 139. Yeah. Okay, sure. Let's see if we got it correct or not. The relative positions. So, if we look at the mask scheme, it's actually quite strict. I'm going to move this up here so we can look at it side by side. Here. Can I make this smaller? There we go. So, first U, near the right-hand end of the line. Right-hand side, okay, pretty near the end. So, that's one mark. Molybdenum, to the right of the peak. Where is the peak? Peak is somewhere here. Peak. And it must be less than one third the distance from peak to you. Ah, what does that mean? So from peak, that's this distance, to you, uranium is over there. One third is where? Ah? So I divide into three parts, though, I guess. One third will be here. So you must be within this range. Less than one third of the distance. Three parts. So it's within the distance. Okay, that's fine. Uh, lanthanum should be 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 of distance from peak to U. What is 0 0.4 to 0 0.6? Ah? Around the halfway mark. Okay, so halfway mark somewhere here. If it's halfway mark, it's 0 0.5. So it's okay. All right. So we managed to hit the right spots. Just make sure that you need to... Be aware of the scale down here. Lah. So if it's 200, it's very far. If it's 100, it's somewhere near the middle. Less than 100. If you want to be very, very sure, you take a ruler and you divide 
the entire horizontal scale into sections and then you plot your graphs, uh, plot your points on the graph. Right. Moving on. Next part. I guess that's a calculation already. Okay, so let's see. The masses of some particles and nuclei are given. Calculate for this reaction the change in U of the rest mass. What is the reaction again? There's a whole lot of stuff. Oh, this. Oh my goodness. Look at this list. So there's going to be some change in mass because of before and after all this has mass. So between here and there, there will be some change in mass. And where does it gone to? Converted into energy. So we got to calculate what is the total mass of all these reactants, mass initial, and compare it with the, all this mass, which is the final mass after the nuclear reaction has happened. So we need to add together all these things and see what's the difference. So which one will have higher mass? Uh? Well, you see on the end here got energy, right? So some of the mass has converted to energy. So I'm going to use the initial minus the final. If you minus the other way, you just get a negative number. Just rub off and redo. Lah. <laughs> okay, so let's do some calculations over here. All right, change in mass. Let's do it. Change in mass. I am going to rewrite the equation so we can see it. There we are. All the whole thing there. So on the left side, what do we have? Let's start with the reactants on this side. Okay, so we have uranium here. I'm going to use our light blue, I guess. To follow color coding. Nice. So uranium, what is the rest mass of uranium? Should be given to us up there. Uranium, 235, that will be 235.123 U. Should we keep all the decimals? Absolutely. They give to us all the decimals, so we should keep every single decimal because it can make a big difference in nuclear reactions. So we have 235 plus a neutron. So we're just going to put 1.009 because it's given to me right here. Okay, so that's before reaction. After reaction, we got all kinds of products. That will be all these pink color ones on the right. All these have mass. So we're going to add together all their masses. But we're going to minus them. So I'm going to use pink color or purple. Okay, so let's put in molybdenum 95 so that will be 94.945 is the rest mass lanthanum 138.955 okay so molybdenum lanthanum two neutrons so two of 1.009 and seven beta these are beta minus emissions and they also have a tiny mass a bit small means no need to include la negligible hey, actually seven of them make a big difference so we got to include them also so seven of 5.5 5 times 10 negative 4 make sure you press calculator very carefully because this is such a long calculation so whew, gotta make sure you do that so if you press everything correctly we should get a value of around 0.21015 you now how many sf should i put this all the sf i don't know i'm just gonna leave all my sf here in the working but maybe for my um, final answer i would put at least two to three sf i think i'll stick with three sf 0 0.210 because this one is two sf over here so but then everything else is so many sf so i think i better keep one more so i'm gonna stick with three sf for this so there's two marks one for final answer and one for your working, if you mark everything properly, sub everything in, and minus. Okay, C1 mark is compensatory for equation or working. Now, with that calculated, change in mass, also known as mass defect or in some form, where, the, where, the, where did the mass go? It became energy. So I'm going to write a reminder here. This is the amount that became energy and released as part of the fission process. And now they ask us, okay, so we can count the change in mass. What is the energy release to 3SF? Oh, underline this if you did not. 3SF. Did you write 3SF answers? So how do you find the energy release? If you know the change in mass, okay, like how much in this process disappeared, then you know that that amount has to go somewhere and it has been released as energy. So we have to convert this lost mass, the mass effect, into energy with Einstein's favorite equation, famous favorite equation, E equals mc squared. So let's convert mass to energy. The mass here will be 0 
I think I'll keep more decibel. 21015. Sure, keep all. Just in case. Times. Oh, I need to convert this to U. Uh, I mean, kg. This is in U, right? If you want to use EMC square, you have to convert to kg. So this is 1.66 times 10. Negative 27 kg per U. This is a constant you can find in the first page or second page of every exam paper. Then speed of light, also another constant to find. is 3 times 10 to about 8 square. And this will give us about 3.1396. I think that's what I got. 1396. That is a lot of energy. Times 10 to the negative 11 joule. I, I mean, it's quite small in terms of joules. Uh, and don't forget, our final answer is in MeV. So we are only in joules. We need to convert joules to MeV. So convert joule to EV. And the way I do that is to divide by E. So this would be 3.1396 times 10 negative 11 divided by, or I guess you could divide it by, what's the E value? Another constant, which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. This will give me 196.2 times 10 to the 6 electron volts. Hmm. 10 to the 6 is mega. So mega electron volt, that's the unit we want. Ah, but 3SF, ah, so we need to put 196 MeV. All 3SF put there. So if this is 3SF, ah, probably here should also 3SF. Ah. So good thing we kept 3SF here. In fact, the mask scheme also reports this answer in 3SF. So in nuclear physics, it's generally better to keep more SF. So 3 marks comes from number 1, your final answer. This must be in 3SF because they are specifically for 3SF. Then the second mark comes from you getting the value of E, either in this one or in the, in the, in the calculation line like that. And lastly, if you use the equation correctly, E equals mc square. Einstein's equation, C1. Either you write it out, obviously, or you use it in a calculation. So that's all for this question. Just make sure you know how to draw binding energy graph and how to calculate based on the change in rest mass, the energy release. Okay, Got change in mass before and after. These are called the reactants. Oh, wrong color. And on the right side are the products. Total mass of reactants, total mass of products. Who's missing? Converted to energy. All right. So that's all for this video. I will see you in the next example. We'll look at more stuff on uh, fission and fusion. That's all for this one. Bye-bye.